Hello, welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts. Today's video is all about which resin you should use and why. We're going to be looking at epoxy resins, both pouring and casting resins, and looking at the difference and why you should use them. We'll be briefly looking at UV resin, and I'll also be discussing polyester resin. So please enjoy this video. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more of my videos on how to use resin and my tutorials. And thank you very much. Get to know the resin that you're using. The more you use it, the more familiar you'll be with it and the more comfortable you'll be with it as well. And get to know how well it works, how deep you can pour it, what you can add to it as well. I try, try to stick to the same brands of resin now that I've got used to certain brands because I know, just know how well they're going to cure. I know how easy it is to mix them. I know what ratios to use and I know what additives work well with them. Make sure that you check the manufacturer's instructions on anything to do with health and safety and also curing times and working pot times as well because they're really, really important. Why would you use a casting resin or a pouring resin over the other one? So let's think about pouring resin. Now, pouring resin tends to be, firstly, a lot thicker than a casting resin. And I find the ones that I use, the curing time is probably about half that, if not a little bit less, than using a casting resin. And it is ideal, because of its thickness, to create pouring um, resin pictures similar to this. You can allow it to thicken up in your pot quite quickly and use it to dome things or to use the surface tension of it to move around to the edges of something. And I do that on jewellery quite a lot, similar to what I've done in this picture. Now, the other thing is, both casting and pouring resin, you can add, if it's epoxy, you can add things like mica, alcohol inks, some acrylic paints, not all acrylic paints, pigments, different things to colour them if you wish to use some sort of colour as well. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do castings with a pouring resin. However, what you can't do is cast really deep objects with it unless you do it in layers. And the disadvantage of sometimes doing it in layers is that you will get a slight line around it where you've poured that layer, let it cure and then poured another layer. Although you can avoid that by not allowing it to cure completely when you pour your second one in. But if you're using a mould like this, these moulds are fine by using a pouring resin because they're not very deep and you can still do them all in one pour and they will cure. What you'll find is that you will get these cured within about 15 to 18 hours, depending on your resin. So always check the cure time in your resin to ensure that you know exactly what it is. With a casting resin, like I said, normally I use the slow cure one. It is very thin. I always pop my bottles into warm water and warm it up first before I mix it. But because it's so thin, it doesn't make nowhere near as many bubbles in the uh, resin and it's got such a long working time that the majority of those bubbles will come to the top and pop easily using a heat gun, a lighter, a torch so, or even blowing through a straw. The advantage is you get a really clear finish at the end that hasn't got uh, very many bubbles in it. The other thing is you might be finding that you're working on a project and you want it to have a long life in the pot that you can use it over several hours because you're doing different things. And I do find that is to be quite an advantage. The other big advantage is that you can pour, certainly for the one that I've got and, and for many of them, but again, check the resin that you're using. You can pour something like this in one pour without any shadow of a doubt and it will get warm but it will cure really well and that's how I did the glowing cube that I made with the LED lights I used it in in one of these here's the picture here and what it did it allowed it me to pour in one go leave it and then demold it now 
I've made this box because I've got a project on the go at the moment, a little diorama. And I will uh, pour this probably in about three separate pours. Now, if you were to use a pouring resin for this, you would probably have to use between eight and nine pours for something as large as this. And I will tell you the size. It's three and a half inches by three and a half inches, which is eight and a half centimeters by eight and a half centimeters. Gotta wait in between each one, uh, the amount of time that you need to wait for it to set up. So ultimately, it is still taking as long as using a thinner casting resin. I think you get as good effect because you are harder, it's much harder to get the bubbles out and also it's um, more likely that you're gonna get little division lines going through it as you, as you see it when it's finished. So a casting resin is a must. So I, th I think it's really important. It's, it's used the right tools for the right um, project. So recap, a pouring resin is for giving a thin, nice layer over the top of a piece of art that you want to protect or over the top of something that you want to have it nice and glossy, similar to this. It's also great for making abstract pictures with added pigments and colours in it as well. And it will cure a lot quicker and it will give you a, a really glossy, clear, shiny finish. Casting resin, to be a lot thinner, it has far less bubbles in it. The bubbles are easy to get through. You can pour, generally you can pour a lot deeper layers or just pour in one go, but it does take longer to cure. So regarding UV resin, now I know a lot of people use only UV resin, they don't use anything else, but I don't tend to do that because firstly I find it's very very expensive for uh, the amount that you get and I just go through it so quickly because I probably use about four litres of resin a week or maybe um, a little bit less or a little bit more. But what I do find UV resin for, and I, I use this particular UV resin, and what I find this really useful for is as a glue. So if I'm sticking something inside of um, something else, or I'm sticking two pieces of uh, something together and I want something that's not gonna be affected when it's in my resin in any way, I'll put two dabs of UV resin on it, join it together, and uh, then I will use that with a UV lamp to use it as a glue. I dried these flowers a little while ago and unfortunately, as you all know, I'm a bit heavy handed. So I need to glue these back onto here before I stick this in, a, in the actual resin project that I've got planned. So I just literally use a little bit of this resin, let it cure. And then when I put it in the um, resin, you'll never know that it's um, been detached and it won't affect anything with that uh, UV resin. So there we go. I also use it if I've got a slight blemish that I don't want to have to sand down. So this, plate, this piece is a little bit dull and as you can see the other side is really shiny and I don't want to have to spend a lot of time um, polishing that. So with the UV resin, I will literally just put a little bit in a pot like this, get a brush, brush it on. As you can see, that's bringing that shine up lovely. Brush it all the way to the edges. And if it's a lovely hot day, I'll just stick it outside in the sun and it will cure really quickly. Um, but it's not a lovely hot day here at the moment, I'm afraid. So all I will do is to give that its shine that it deserves. I will turn on my UV light. So there we go, that's now got a nice shine to it and it's got a nice and clear and it's set and it's redone in, in a matter of minutes rather than having to wait a long time for the um, epoxy resin to dry. So I think UV resin certainly has its place and there's lots of people on YouTube that deal with UV resin, in fact Maxine who uh, often comments on my videos, has a channel, and she uses, I think, only UV resin. So I will put a link to her uh, channel and support Maxine. She's doing well, her channel's starting to grow and she makes some great videos, but I'll put a link to Maxine's channel in the description as well. 
There is also a polyester resin, which I do use now and again, and it comes like this, and this is the hardener, and you have to measure out very accurately how much hardener to use within your polyester resin. Now, polyester resin can be used on certain projects. I don't tend to put it if I'm um, casting with something because I always find it bleaches it out. Additionally, I find that it's also, when it's cured, it's very fragile. If you drop it on the floor, it will probably break. And also, it stinks. You must wear a mask. You must have a really well-ventilated room to use polyester resin um, in it. It absolutely stinks. It is really not good for your health. Uh, not that any resin is really good for your health. But um, it's also flammable. You can't torch bubbles out of it if um, you've got bubbles in it. And you can't really move it around using a heat gun because it is quite flammable. And it actually says on there, um, this vapour is harmful to the health if inhaled. The only advantage about, uh, about, I think, that people use polyester resin in crafting is because it is so much cheaper than um, epoxy resin. But to me, it's just not worth it. I do have some. I use it now and again, but actually I tend to avoid it. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. Please like and subscribe. And if you want to watch more of my videos, please hit that bell button and it will give you the notifications. And if you've got any questions about the difference between pouring or casting resin, or you would like to just ask a question about anything art and craft wise that I cover, please leave it in the descriptions and I will get back to you. Thank you very much. Bye.